Yeah, man. The Froggy family was good to me, brother. We had a, the first off, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no worries, man. I'm this is love like, coming to hang this out. Is, well, yeah. I mean, this was inevitable, right? Yeah. <laughs> you knew this show yeah. was going to happen. Yeah. We, <laughs> it was uh, just whether he wanted to actually do it or not. <laughs> we uh, we have we have a lot of stories together. That's for sure. Yeah, man. So to to, to let the folks know right away, uh, you and I connected back like in two thousand three. Yeah, that was right. Uh, yep, I was uh, assistant promotion director for Froggy Radio down in Ryan Court, and uh, in Sweet Robinson Township. For those who don't know what Ryan Court is, yeah. So uh, this gentleman comes in. He's got a uh, guitar business, uh, Washburn Guitars, uh-huh. and. We immediately just start talking. He's getting set up. Uh, I remember your dad being down there helping yeah. you set up. Yep. Met your children. Yeah, they, they were. They, they still remember you fondly. Yeah, they were. They were small. And um, how's that make you feel? Yeah. How, old, how old do you feel now? Right, right, <laughs> right. I, I was a pup back then. I mean, I was fresh out of college in two thousand one. Yeah. yeah. So um, I came to Froggy right when we moved into Pittsburgh. And ironically, my father was doing contracting, was part of the group that actually built the suite out. I remember. In Ryan Court yeah. for Froggy Radio in Pittsburgh. Yeah, because originally we were on the bottom floor and we were split in time. Pull us a little closer to you. You can definitely yep. stay back there. Just, yeah, there you go. There you go. We're um, um, split in time between Ryan Court and we were still in Brownsville. See, I don't remember that. See, no, that was before you. So, uh, while we were being built upstairs next to you, um, we were down on the bottom floor. Didn't know that either. Okay. And we were just gradually just moving everything to Pittsburgh. And then um, 2002, we moved in. Yep. And What a run that was, huh? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> <clears throat> the, the, the town had not seen anything like Froggy Radio. You guys yeah. just literally – Literally, and it was good timing for country music. Sure. You guys like exploded yeah. on the radio scene in Pittsburgh almost like overnight. We, I got hired as a assistant promotion director. We were very, very promotion directed. Um, we street teams. Yep. That was our thing. You remember our vehicles? <laughs> we had a thirty foot limo. My company car was a hundred and seventeen thousand dollar H one Hummer. Yes, painted I, yellow. Yep, vans. Um, I remember the hearse. The hearse, the hearse man. The first, the first day I started working for Froggy, I'm with me, Tim Miller. He's like, we got to go pick up this car. I'm like, I'm like, all right, whatever, man. You know, 22 years old, whatever I was. I said, let's go pick up this car. Pull up into this. Like, it's a hearse. It's a 1977 Cadillac hearse with 11,000 miles on it. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Oh, right on. He's like, you got to drive us back to the station. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, what am I doing with? What am I doing in life right now? <clears throat> so, that freak you out? Uh, getting in there for the first time? A little bit, yeah. I remember that thing. Yeah. So, when we were coming into Pittsburgh, we had to get all these vehicles painted. So, we're going over to Oakland, dropping this vehicle off. Then we have to get them decaled, um, all the decals put on them. And then that skybox come along, which we just got rid of that. It finally went away. Wow, okay. The thing is, that was like a billboard sitting in I remember. the parking lot there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we all those vehicles, and then we had the 30-foot frog balloon and all that stuff. I mean, and we were out and about. We went nonstop. Just trying to make a big impact right yeah, away. Yeah, with the um, the owner of Froggy, his main thing was the reason he had Mr. Froggy and the Froggy, he used Disney's yeah. type uh, marketing, you yeah. know, a face – Family friendly, in you know, Costanza. <laughs> Just you know, as soon as you see those yellow vehicles, it's there's Froggy, there's Froggy, and um, we had, we had the promotion items. I mean, you remember our closet? Just filled thousands of can koozies, t-shirts. I do remember coloring books. He, My kids we, we got most of them. <laughs> we, we had a palette, uh-huh. a literal palette of um bumper stickers oh yeah they're, they're still around <laughs> yeah i mean but it, it was like a full blitz it was a full promotion blitz as i remember yeah we went hard every day um to be out in the city if there was um rallies for the steelers penguins anything we were there 
We used to um, make pinatas of the opposing quarterback to win the playoffs. And we would put tickets to the playoffs inside there. We'd put poker chips and there'd be CDs, T-shirts. And we'd go down to these rallies and the whole thing was we're trying to get TV time, you know? Yeah, you for know? sure. And we always go, anytime we got on TV, you know, it was a good day. Was that the golden age of uh, country music or one of the golden ages in country music, do you think? Um, that was the rise of country music. You think? Because um, um, a lot of people say like with Garth in like the like yeah. the mid nineties, right? Like Garth so hit. so it faded off for a little bit. Garth took his break. Got it. But I didn't like country music when I first came. I liked everything but country music. And I, and you know, next thing you know, <laughs> it starts growing on you. You know, I'm I'm literally surrounded by it. And then I started learning some artists. Next, you know, I'm riding down the street. I think my track is sexy. <laughs> I'm like, like, whoa, what am I doing? What, what is that? Next, you know, I mean, and then you start meeting artists yeah. and record reps and you're just around it. And I came around and I liked everything, including country. And then... Um, it started to blend together, too. It was... Country got so big, it had its genres within its own genre. Yep. You had your rock, like... Eric Church, mm -hmm. you know, you had Aldine. boy bands, Rascal Flats, yep. you know. Oh my then God, then yeah. you had your bro country, Luke Bryan, you know. I mean it just Bro Country. That's what they called it. That's what they called it. That was the start of it. And um we actually did we would used to do events down Saddle Ridge in Station Square. Yep. Every Friday and Saturday night I was there. And I had Jason Aldean down there. I had Little Big down there. I had Luke Bryan there. The one night at Saddle Ridge. Yes, this was right when they were coming out. So, like you say, mid late two thousands. Um, from like two thousand six to two thousand nine. Okay, like we had a lot of people down there. Okay, I did. Um, we did a lot of. Uh, we called them Hoppy Hours. Uh, down at the the Rhythm House with Daryl Price. Oh yeah. Um, I had uh, Darius Rucker down there. Didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and then we did shows nonstop out at um. Pepsi Cola Roadhouse. Oh yeah, we did uh, over three hundred shows there, including Willie Nelson, big Tim guy. McGraw, yep, um, Taylor Swift. I, mean, I went to a show with Abby. <clears throat> Abby, uh, when he left Poverty Nick, that was mm -hmm. his first solo gig. They promoted the hell out of that. Yeah, I went to that one. Abby's a great guy. He, yep. I've always rooted for him, and um, he's, he's always been, been on here a couple times. Yeah, Abby's a good guy. Nah, I see him. He's doing his fishing now, and yeah, um, man, he still he's does like, his he's serious as shit too. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, I mean, I've always been fascinated by the fact that you brought a new radio station to Pittsburgh, which is not in and of itself outrageous, but you guys immediately became like a force almost overnight. I get it. It was yeah. tons of, you know, you dump money in there and do tons of promotion sure. and all that. But it was there a point in time where you remember looking back at the beginning and it was like, wait a second. We like kind of like, we did it. Like we almost overnight, we kind of fucking did it. No, it, it took, it took a couple years because, um, was there a moment that we were like? we were bullied? Um, uh, Live Nation, we couldn't get into the pavilion. They wouldn't let us be on site for the shows. I know. That. So, so we had to do guerrilla marketing. So basically, we would put the skybox up across the street of the entrance, or we would set up at the Pepsi Cola Roadhouse because we took that over and we were exclusively doing all their shows. So um, we just we just kept pounding. And um, the one year, uh, Toby Heath. We did the Day of a Thousand Shirts, and I had people lined up in their cars. We gave out a thousand T-shirts to people going to his show that night. It had the um, "I'm we'll stomp a boot in your ass" from uh, uh -huh. from his song about nine eleven, and uh, we gave out a thousand T-shirts in twenty minutes. Damn! I I controlled the parking lot Damn. where I had them looped around, so. And I just had them controlled, and they just kept driving through. It was a drive-through. Just handed out a thousand shirts, and everyone's wearing them. And um, the point where I think we really made it was when we were. There was no question we were allowed on the property, and we fought for that. And um, it took a long time for that to happen, but they knew that we were making an impact. And the point of their business is selling tickets, right? So, being that we were in. Eastern Ohio, 
mm-hmm. down Steubenville, East Liverpool, Pittsburgh, Brownsville. A lot they they know whenever their tickets what they're being sold because they gave Got us it. each different passwords. Got it. <clears throat> so yeah. so when they go on sale, they know they know where it came from. Yeah. So it was like you got to let us in now. So what was the most surprising thing to you when you got involved in promotions when you first were there? I mean, obviously it was like a lot of newness to you at the time, but what was the most surprising thing? The amount of people that loved country music. Really? Yeah. You when going out to those shows. Um, my first concert was a Chenny, uh, Kenny Chesney concert, but it was at Star Lake. And roughly like 2002, three, yeah, four? Uh, 2002. It was definitely 2002. Okay. And at that time, we had four frequencies. What's that mean? Um, we had 98.3. Oh. We had 104.3, right. yeah, 103.5, right. and 94.9. So we had two, our morning show and our afternoon shows were simulcasted. Got it. Which basically, they were on all four stations. Midday. Um, it was their own people. So people would hear their local stuff from, mm-hmm. from that area. And then in the evening, um, it would simulcast overnight as well. So, But just the amount of people that loved that music and just well, I watched it grow. And just, I mean, people that I grew up around weren't country music fans. And then all of a sudden it was boom. I mean, there was just. Do you have a theory on <clears throat> that? Um, it's real music. Like, um, it talks about, like I said, when it, it has its own genres within itself. So you hear Eric church and I mean, that guy can play Keith Urban can play a guitar Mm -hmm. and you hear that rock. And I mean, and then it's a song you can kind of relate to. See, I think that was what initially I saw was the connection to rock and roll. Yeah. Um, we were doing a lot of like really heavy rock stuff with boogie street, but that wasn't what I personally done. Sure. So when I would see the mainstream rock thing blending with country, I got it. But what surprised me, and the reason I bring that up is I didn't see the connection to the hip-hop thing, which apparently happened with Taylor Swift and some other ones later. Well, well where I think the hip-hop connection kind of came in, um, you're looking at Florida Georgia Line. Is that it? Um, basically, whenever they... 2012-ish, something like that? <sighs> Maybe? It was later. It, 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 had it was be, later. Yeah, because um, they toured with Nelly. And, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, it was that was a weird show. I can't even imagine the it, crowd must have been yeah. insane for that. Well, I mean, it was completely packed, and Nelly came on right before FGL, and this is Nelly, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and everyone's like. <laughs> yeah. So would that be the similar circumstance when I don't know. 10, 20 years ago when Earth, Wind, and Fire opened up for Van Halen? Was yeah, the same no, no. blending it, of the two? It, it, it was different. And then, um, like I said, I mean, uh, it was just, it was little pieces by little pieces. Kind of a beautiful thing. It, it was awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. It was awesome, I mean, Eric. I mean, like, it was just, and I thrived off the, the energy. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I loved being at concerts. Yeah. I loved going up against the other radio stations and, you know, um, we started the uh, Take Me Backstage t-shirt promotion, which... So when was that? That was a big thing. That was definitely a big thing. That It was huge. I can't remember the exact year for it. 2005-ish, something like that? Uh, it was a little bit later than that. Okay. I but I said, you know, why don't we... Because in country, all of the artists do backstage. So we would get six to eight passes for each artist from the record label. And basically, we would walk around, find people wearing our t-shirts... Hey man, thanks for and we would film it and video it and that's yeah. whenever we would we were putting photo galleries on our website. I was the photo I remember I, that. I was the yeah, photo man. gallery Isn't guy. That a beautiful era. No, it was like, awful. Come I, on, man. It was I, a beautiful I, era, I, man. I had a type I had to type in code. <laughs> like I I wasn't I, I, know, I, I, was, I, I wasn't, I, you know. They used to call it BB. No, that was the forum. BBS forum with code or something. I bullshit. have no idea. But I, I, didn't go to, but I didn't go to school for computers. <laughs> and, like, I had to put a, a parenthesis in this and, yeah, that, and a bold yeah, in this. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what is this? And it, it, it was would, a different kind of experience, though. It would for, take me freaking, yeah, but like, was, three hours to put up, like, a, but it was cool. a concert announcement. It was cool, man. It was. It was. But then, um, then you know, once... Uh, Facebook came around. Oh. Um, 
we really started hitting it hard, I figured a way that we could really, really boost our listenership and get them active. And I would do ticket giveaways on there. Right. A like and share contest. If you want to win a pair of tickets. And every year we would do a um, like and share contest for I remember um, that. mega tickets. Which was yeah? What was the mega ticket? The mega ticket was the package you can buy all the country shows for one price. Got a pro. Okay, okay. So we would have a few of those to give away, and we would get tens of thousands yeah, of yeah, likes yeah, on yeah, and yeah. shares and everything. Yeah, and that's how we built up our um, our uh, Facebook page to just under a hundred thousand. Right, before Facebook, go back, <clears throat> back to the two thousands. One of the coolest things that was done for me, which I will always thank you and Tim and Danger for this, was. Every time that there would be a Froggy Idol show, I think it was once a week, yeah. invariably, the vendors were typically paired up with a local artist or a local celebrity. Sure. And invariably, the vendors either were afraid to go on air or they were too busy. Yeah. And you have a vacancy. And all you guys would do is just walk down the hallway. You never have to ask me if I want to go on, right. on, on radio, right? But I would, <coughs> I would end up going on this radio multiple times yeah i mean and judging yes because danger singing <laughs> i mean you remember how you remember how big american idol oh became? Yeah, yeah and that was yeah. before even the voice and everything yeah. else and then we moved over didn't start doing the voice yeah um danger did a lot of that stuff and uh that was so much fun it, it was no we, we did it that time. was so much fun yeah um a lot of people don't know this but uh taylor swift was created at the froggy studio um in Pittsburgh. Let's talk about that. So I remember meeting her through you and Danger just briefly. And it, it, don't take this the wrong way, yeah. but you folks were kind enough to bring a lot of people down my way. Mm -hmm. Some ended up hitting, some didn't. And you sure. brought some other people that were, we'll talk about in a second, that were awesome to me. Yeah. Like older, established artists. Yeah. But Taylor, I had no clue. You did at that time. You no, probably didn't. absolutely no, not. Just another young artist bringing down very nice looking young lady. Talented. She was she was fourteen or fifteen but, at the time. Yeah, you very young. And I just thinking to myself, oh, I got to go home. Okay, we'll bring her down. We'll <laughs> yeah. So um, so she comes in and um, as uh, artists did, they would go in the studio with Danger, yeah. and um, so I would go down, take pictures, just hang out, and just kind of do my thing. Yeah, you know, and uh, basically. Uh, so this little curly haired blonde girl, tall, petite little thing. Yep. She comes in and she's singing. Um, she has a song called Tim McGraw. So she's starting to promote that. And here, the vice president of our company and her father were very good friends. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get her in the business for a while. Frank was. It wasn't time yet. It wasn't time yet. Right. So. Um, the story behind it was another guy um, was going to be leaving a record label and starting his own record label. And he basically got hooked up with Taylor and her dad right. via um, Frank. Yep. And uh, they went down to Nashville. and The rest is kind of history. It became known as Big Machine Records. Right on. And uh, there was backing from financially. There was backing from Pittsburgh people that you also know. I certainly do. And we'll still uh, say the Pronto family. Yeah, yeah, um, great folks. And uh, it was a roll of the dice. There's a uh, there's a thousand of them that try and happen. Come up sevens, man. And um, literally, the song Tim McGraw took off. We had her back at the Pepsi Roadhouse. We had her back quite a few times, and. All of a sudden, this girl just exploded. Yeah, that's. I mean, but just I remember exploded. I got you guys introduced me to her in the casual, like you did with many other people. <clears throat> and then it was like six months later. It was like, like my daughter is asking. Yeah, you and know, her mother. Hey, can we go see Taylor? Well, Swift? she came in and sang an Eminem song. Wow. She sang "Lose It" on the air with Danger. Yeah, there's which, a video of that. Yes, and someone just brought it back up. It's been twenty. 20 years since uh, Danger was I on the I remember air. that video, yeah. And, uh, but, um, oh, yeah, Danger loves talking about that video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> yeah, so. That's, um, a cool, that's a cool bit of history, though, music history. Yeah, so um, in around 2008, 2009, uh, the uh, economy was tanking. Mm -hmm. uh, the car industry, that was the majority of our advertising dollars. Car dealers. I was at car dealers every Friday, I remember. Saturday, Sunday, I doing remember. promotions, broadcasting. That's a bulk of radio advertising anyways, <clears throat> sure. right? 
Yeah, so um, it all started going away, and things started slipping, and people weren't spending. They didn't have the money to spend. So there was a lot of cutbacks and stuff like that happening, and um, everything just kind of slowed down a little bit. But country music, the concerts and whatnot, didn't slow down at all. Um, the Kenny Chesney concerts, that became, whether you liked country or not, you would go to a Kenny, people go to Kenny Chesney shows. It's an experience. Okay, so, okay, so unpack that for me. Why? Why is it an experience? It's just the the thought that goes into the tailgating, the parties, the stuff you see down there. And it used to be a real show, a real shit show down there as far yeah. as. And um, they put an end to that. The thing was, it was, they were open in the parking lots at 7 a.m. I remember. At 7 a.m. and the gates wouldn't open until like 6 o'clock. Yeah. And then you'd have... Johnny Hero get off the bus and he has a handle of Jack and he's chugging it at seven in the morning. You ain't gonna make it, bud. No, man. like and a, lot, a lot of that happened. It happens every concert. Yeah. Um, before I go in and do radio rooms and stuff like that, I'm out in the lots running my setup, my staff, and uh, you just see it. It's like the Titanic. <laughs> at some point, it just. Boom. Have you ever figured out just on a personal level how like? <clears throat> What goes on there? Because for the last thing I'd ever want as a young kid going to a show that I've looked forward to, the last thing I would want would be to go there and then not have any kind of recollection of it. And that has to happen for a lot of people. I'd say probably to 80, 80% of the people. Like I, I never, and I used to like the party, but I never yeah. understood why would you want to ruin your own experience? It's just, I mean, it's summertime usually. You know, you're outside. It's nice. Girl, cowgirls are all running around, and you know. <laughs> and the thing is, what, what, that was the one thing that amazed me in country music. All of a sudden, I'm 22 years old. I got to a Kenny Chesney concert. I'm like, Yeah, what the hell is going that, on here? That I do like, remember. Yeah, I'm like, Whoa, like what is going on here? I'm like, This is nuts. And it, I mean, it's like four to one. So, so let me share this with you. You will get a laugh out of this for sure. Um, you probably don't remember saying this, and I, but I remember you definitely saying this. I went to a show that you guys had at Saddle Ridge, and I walked in. And I remember saying to you, "Dude, this do you realize this is nothing like the crowds that I'm used to going to for the clients that I, the bands that I worked with." <clears throat> and you go, you said to me, "Well, yeah, man, this is like this is what we deal with." I'm like, I said, "Dude, the crowds I'm used to seeing are like the fight scene of the Lord of the Rings." Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Black this leather. Is not what this is. This yes, totally, totally different experience. Yes, and, and the thing was, it was like I always told people, I'm like, listen, don't tell, don't tell too many of these guys. Don't tell too many people because honestly, don't mess this up. Yeah, this ain't no metal show, man. Oh, my. this ain't no metal. And they audience. used to be up on the bars dancing and Saturday was doing dance. It was insane. And I mean, we. It was insane. It was. We packed that place every weekend, and I yeah. mean, it was just. Yeah, I watched uh, watched us win Super Bowl forty three there. Yeah. I watched that's, Stanley Cups. That'd be about right. Yeah, yeah. yep, that'd be it about was, right. It was insane when we won Super Bowl forty three. We had a party there, and I remember I made it out of there just in time to go down on the south side, and just you know everyone they closed the streets down. We yeah. got down there parked um, over by my. Um, my, my ex-wife's sister's house and we walked up to Carson and it was just people everywhere just going nuts I'm like how could this day yeah, the be the timing was good because I think right around that time too Poverty Neck hit big right mm -hmm. and then Ben Roethlisberger had a connection there with the yes. video and all that stuff well we used to do events with Ben when we drafted him at Finnegan's Wake on, we on Wednesday nights didn't know that <clears throat> yep um, different players would come down every weekend Right. Well, every Wednesday like night. Live, it was like a live talk show? We were, we would broadcast and just do pictures and stuff. Okay. And, and just hung out. I remember I, I got a picture of me and Ben. He's just a kid. I'm just a kid. Um, he's got a little gold chain with a football <laughs> with a football charm on it. And it's a picture of me and him standing in front of my $117,000 Hummer. <laughs> my company car. <laughs> That's fantastic, man. No, it was just, it was. It was a good era. Yeah. And I mean, I just remember being able to bring people down to your office, mm. and uh, uh, it was just so weird. Like you, it was a perfect match. We, although you know, I was dealing mostly with rock, the rock genre, yeah. guitar players and bands. 
But this whole country thing exposed me to a whole different side. And then we ended up through Washburn working with Randall Flat, Rascal Flats. Mm-hmm. And then we did, we were starting to work with Toby Keith. We had some prototypes and so forth. And I just realized right away, Hey, this country thing, if I ignore this, it's for I real. ignore it for my own, at my own detriment. Yeah. You know, and I'm not sure I would have really understood that had you guys not have been there. Yeah. No. And I mean, it just, I just watched it blow up. And I mean, it, it, it owned, it owned the, it owned the entire country. I mean, it was just that genre was rocking. I mean, it just became so big, and I mean, I remember in probably 2016, 15 or sixteen, I had thirteen concerts in the summer out at. Uh, that is insane. Start, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a whole lot, but thirteen concerts 13 major within events, within yeah. three months. Yep. In that year, between doing. Uh, I did 180 promotions, remotes, 180 remotes. Wow. I ended up doing 26 concerts that year. That's big. Damn. That's, that's almost a, an event every other day. But sometimes I would do three and four events in a day. I'd start out in the morning and we'd be doing pre-parties for the show or yeah. ticket drops or T-shirt drops, stuff like that. And then um, I wouldn't finish up until the headliner got on stage. At, Damn. Nine yeah, o'clock. I and it was funny. I had an outsider's view of like what you and Danger and a lot of folks at the stage, Tim Miller, <clears throat> a lot of folks at the stage, and had to go through because it wasn't all, you know, a party and fun. There was like, oh, everyone's shit. like, you have the best job in the yeah, world. It's a shit ton of work. I mean, to go around yeah. them, be around them. I didn't have to work, yeah. but I I saw yeah. what went into it, and it was like <laughs> there was a lot of humping, you oh, know, yeah. a lot of but, hustle. But I mean. Oh, we went nonstop. I mean, like I said, we were promo- we were promotionally driven as a as a station. So yeah, any events like yeah. I, I did a uh, we did a private concert with Hank Williams Jr. in the Great Hall down at um, Heinz Field. Damn. Well, Acrisure Stadium. Yeah, yeah, whatever they call says, it now. Says, this week. says no one ever. But uh, we literally it was a win to get in type thing. Yeah, and. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> Hank Williams Jr. Man, I'm I'm, I'm standing. I'm, and the thing was, it, it never really hit me <clears throat> um, what exactly was going on. Yeah, I did stuff people that would pay thousands of dollars to do. I'm sure. Uh, Randy Owen came into our station. Uh, yep. lead singer of Alabama. Yep. Did you meet him? When yep, was- certainly did. So he's in there, and uh, I asked him to sign a guitar. He goes, "Well, who's it going to?" I'm like. We give them to charities. I don't know who it's going to. I'm like, he just signed the guitar. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'll sign it. But I want my people to know who this guitar goes to. I'm like, all right, I'll have my people talk to your people. Yeah, they they get all – some of the so, get jaded. Well, the next thing you know, they're like, hey, uh, we need you to take him up to his hotel up in Green Tree. I'm like, all right. So I'm driving with Randy Owen. Um, I wasn't a huge Alabama fan. Like, I knew who they were. And I'm riding in the car, and all of a sudden, Dixieland Delight comes on, and we're driving up Green Tree Hill, and he's sitting, Randy Owens sitting there singing it next to me. I'm like, you, can't. that's, like, that's pretty like, cool. That was, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was pretty cool. You yeah, know, that, that's pretty cool. And then uh, you remember, remember when uh, Chesney came to the station? Uh, yeah, we, we, we brought you, listeners in, and you they brought them. You brought them down my place because <clears> I, I have the photo. Yeah, yeah. He had the, the other thing, I don't know if you remember this. I had this little thing for. Um, Oh, who was the female who tried country for a while? She's a good singer, but she she tried country. Oh, the name will come to me anyways. But you, uh, you always you always took care of us. Yeah, no, you like always. A, I listen. I mean, I you, always, you definitely did. Uh, we felt like I we thought were part I, of the I thought what family. you were I thought what you were doing was awesome. Um, so I thought it was a great fit. Yeah, and the stuff you were doing with Kiss, and oh, yeah. I mean, it was insane. And it was funny because Paul ended up knowing, and we were like, Are you, "You have a radio station in your building?" I said, "Yeah, they're country though." And he goes, well, "That's like the big." He said, "That's like the big thing." He uh, said that to me. That was like 2004. Sure, no, and I mean, he that, knew. He knows it, what's going on. There's been a lot of people that have tried to come to country, and Stephen Tyler. Oh yeah, no doubt. I had him. No I doubt. Ho- I hosted him. Um, Probably 2017, maybe 18. Um, I handled his entire visit. He hung out. 
I remember. I was not in town. I was in, oh, my God, I was in Alabama that weekend. I remember he came in. You guys let me know. Danger, let me know. He's here. I'm like, I'm not here. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm a different cause, state. Yeah, because you were, you were, yeah, you were advertising with us at the yep. time yep. for, uh, for um, your yep. real estate. Yep. And um, he came in. I handled his visit for and it was wild. Because well, they recognize if the country was the thing. Right. Yeah. Well, um, Van Zant, you brought Van yes. Zant down here. Yes. We I had did. the photos, and Freddie was like, dude, it's, the, Van, it's wild. the Van Zants were here. I'm like, yeah, that's I know, right. this so, is insane. And so the whole thing is, it, I don't get starstruck anymore. Like, that's I, how I, I was going to ask like, you. Like, probably since. Well, let me ask you this. So when were you, and then when did you realize it doesn't happen anymore to me? Um. When were you? I just started meeting all these people. And once I got through the first round of meeting. Who was in the first round? Like, I mean, the first round of meeting everybody. Right. Okay. You know, I mean, I, okay. met, I met a Blake Shelton when he played at Pepsi Cola Roadhouse. You know, I met all these people. I'm like, oh, you know, I got, it was a little into me. I met the Dixie Chicks. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. And and then uh, all of a sudden it was like, it was just my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't really care anymore. But it as you go to radio rooms and stuff like that, like I'll talk to them just like I'm talking to you Certainly. right now. And talking, Certainly. And talking fishing or golfing or whatever. Uh, which is what they really want to talk about. Yeah. Um, they get real uncomfortable at times because people walk in and they're just, people are just standing there, just uh-huh. staring at them like, <laughs> like, hey. Which makes things so uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> so, like, um, I could I could talk to any of them, you know what I mean? And Was there anyone that you met in that journey where it was like, God, Damn, I mean, wow, wow. Garth Brooks. That was the one? Garth Brooks. I mean, because he wasn't around for so long. And then he, when I met him, he was coming to do six shows that sold out in minutes. And it was like, hey, Garth Brooks, hey, hey what's your name, man? Most down-to-earth guy, cool as hell. The next day, we were seeing him again, meeting him again. I was fine. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, hey, he said, Donnie, right? His memory is amazing. Like, I mean, he... It's impressive. Yeah, no, he just... He's a huge Pittsburgh guy. He loved... Yeah, 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 yeah. Went down. I mean, I'm surprised he didn't make the Pirates team, to be honest with you. When he's, he, still, he's still a fan, too, wasn't he? Yeah. But, but he was down at Pirates uh, training. Down I did Brady. not know that. That was a couple, few years back. Like I said, I was... I was uh, oh, no shit. That's why I said I'm surprised he didn't make the team. <laughs> they could use any help they could possibly get. God. Um... I'm trying to think of this. This so there was this country singer. I guess she's country singer, um, or she, maybe it was pop singer. She went country. I've, I've always dug her voice. Michelle Branch. Nah, it'll it'll come to me through this conversation. But you actually knocked on my door. Not hey, you're not gonna believe who's in the station. And then you said her name like you dragged me. Cheryl up Crow. The, I, nah, no, it's a good guess. Because we, but pop. we had her too. Yeah, you did. I met Cheryl had her. Crow. Yep. Yeah. I'm trying to think of who else. It'll, it'll come to me. Yeah. Um. Or we'll pause this and we'll, we'll edit it and we'll figure it Dolly out. Dolly Parton. Now you brought her down too. Yeah. Yeah. And she walked right out of she walked right out of my office and walked right on to her tour bus and like left. Like she yeah. like she said, Well, you know, Eric, I gotta go now. I said, Well, I, I thank you so much for coming. She goes, I don't know what you're doing in here. She says, But it's son, you got a hell of an operation. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never she, forget she, that she, sweetheart, you know? Yeah, she was a sweet lady and uh Yeah. Like she came in, she put the froggy hat on. She was walking around. With <laughs> she the, knows how to work it, man. Yeah, I mean, she knows she knows how he's got how it goes. But I mean, it was funny though, because like I would always have to be the bad guy to the public whenever like people would come to the the studio. Remember, like Chesney's bus. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about that for a second. So we were connected right to you, and <clears throat> at, at where our back door was was a loading area, luckily yes. for us, so we could bring guitars in and yeah. so forth. But ultimately, a lot of times, the tour bus would drive right into our little parking area. Not my parking area, but the building's parking area, which is cool. We would have them go up, loop around the yes. other building, and then we'd have yes. them come down. And the bus, the bus would block off yes. the ramp so they could get off the bus. Okay, so these jackasses <laughs> apparently didn't let me know that it was Chesney or someone else coming in. And... I was internet only, which means we didn't have a storefront. We were kind of hiding out there for the most part. Yes. We had no inner, we didn't do right. any intrastate ship. No we one knew not, you were there but us. Right. There's like literally a couple hundred people standing out looking in my window. Like, I'm like, yeah. where the hell did these people come from here? They followed the tour bus. 
It was a fucking zoo. They it and people were standing at a out commercial there to, uh, industrial park or yeah. a commercial office yeah. park. And I had to be like, listen, nope, out, dude, out. I that, gotta throw. You. And the thing was, like, I had there to, was hundreds of people. I had to flex on them. Like, you better back it up. You better back it up. Security. Is that what happened? Security. <laughs> I was, I was, I, I was built back then. <laughs> I remember, I was like, what are you, like, can I help you? I opened that door, and it was just like, <laughs> like Froggy's over there. <laughs> like, and, uh, well, whenever I brought Steven Tyler into our Robinson building, um, where Mad Max is, up on yeah, the fourth floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bottom floor is the uh, Bella Kappa hair studio. Oh, that's right. That's so right. They all knew. That's They right. all knew that Steven Tyler was in the building. So, like wow, they're in the hallways and everything else. I'm like, nope, you got to go back down. Like I can't, you know. And the record record rep was like, listen, you got to keep this under control. I was like, no problem. I'll th-. There was a guy that come in from uh, he just opened a business right across the hall from us. Yeah, he's like, oh, oh Keith said I could be here. I was like, Keith ain't in charge. <laughs> I was like, get the hell out of here. I was like, I'm not trying to be an asshole to you, but get out. I remember. And I mean, it was just in literally. He sat in our studio for about two hours, and they were getting ready to miss, miss a plane. And he was having a good time. Yeah, he brought his dogs in. Yeah, he yeah. had his girlfriend with him, and his dog took a piss in the corner over there. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. He 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 went straight into the women's room on his way out. He's like, ah, I'm Steven Tyler. I'll do what I want. <laughs> I don't give a shit. So and then uh. Then he come, so I'm taking him down, and uh, they have a limo out there for him, or a car, or whatever it was, and there's like 500 girls out there. I was like, open door. I was like, don't, <laughs> just don't. I was like, they're all cheering, like yeah. I'm like, and I'm like, all right, man, I'll see you later. He goes, hey, man, Donnie, thanks so much, man. Give me a hug. <laughs> Steven Tyler wrapped me up, gave me a big old hug. I'm like, all right, man, that's cool. And see, I think what's so strange, strange is I'm so old that I remember being a, a 10-year-old kid buying, like, Aerosmith Rocks in 76, and I can't believe it. That guy on the album cover then is this guy still ah. tired today. Life's crazy. Yeah, but um, Life's crazy, he, had his, he had his little fidget toys that he just has to. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. you got to think of how much pressure is on some of those people. Yeah, and the things they've seen. The thing is, I mean, they can't go to the store. You yeah, know who their, I think has the best? is different. You know who the best? has the best gig marshmallow yeah the, the dj no knows who it is because he wears a damn marshmallow on well, his head I, and no I, one... I think kiss had that in the 70s they were yes. able to go where they wanted to go but the funny part was they actually if you listen if you read all the autobiographies they wanted attention and they yeah. couldn't fucking get it back then they right they were young because they wanted... there wasn't social media no, you know what I mean? There wasn't no. social media. And, and they could never do that a th- today. A 35 millimeter they camera. They couldn't do it today. There's no. no way you could hide your identity today. No, but, like but it was funny. Then. I was with uh, uh, Kane Brown backstage. Yeah. And um, I was, like I said, I just talked to these people normal. And I'm like, Certainly. I was like, oh, man, do you know the song we did with Marshmallow, man? I was, you know, I was different, edgy, you know? He's like, oh, yeah. I was like, how is he? He's like, oh, he's cool, you know? He goes, I was like, I said the same thing I just said to you. I was like, he got a pretty good gig. No one knows. He goes, yeah, man. The one time we were in a club, in this nightclub out in Vegas, you know, and we were all packing it in, this and that. And all of a sudden, Mello comes walking up, and uh, Bouncer's like, nope, sorry. You can't have any more people in there. <laughs> so beautiful. He had no, he had no idea there was <laughs> Marshmallow. So <laughs> He's like, man, Mello was like, what the hell? <laughs> He's like, I'm Marshmallow. He's like, <laughs> sure you are. <laughs> yeah. You better go get your helmet, boy. <laughs> All right, so I'm not asking you to out any artists, but there had to have been a couple artists along the way that were disappointing to you for whatever reason. And we, like I said, we're not. I'm just in telling you, saying who it is. But no, um, any any I'll, things you remember that, that were kind of like, like why wow, it surprised you? Well, the thing is, what I've come to realize is they're human beings. Uh-huh. And I never held a grudge over someone being shitty or yeah, because everyone can have a bad. I get day. it. You can't be on all the time. No, and it's not reflective of who they really are. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, Zach Brown's a little off sometimes. Uh, he doesn't meet any of his fans. He used to do. I didn't know that. He used to do an eat and greet, which him and his he has. Um, Chef Rusty was his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. And he would travel around locally and get all kind of fresh farm, yeah, local, and cook a meal. And then the band would serve it to people. It's pretty cool. But 
they wouldn't wouldn't take pictures. You'd come up say hello, but they didn't wouldn't take pictures. And ah, uh, so, so that was that was a little weird to me. Um, being that that's your fans, you know what I mean. Yeah. I think you have to look back and have a little humble pie every now and then, like uh-huh. you know. And, but I mean, maybe there's something that I don't know. Could know? be, you know. Um, Could be. Other than that, um, country artists are very approachable, though. They're amazing. Like rock, honest to God, yeah, rock. You don't know what you. It's a when, mixed when you bag just asked me that, I had to dig deep for that one because I really have no one else. Um, wow. Car- Carrie Underwood was, she was young when. Uh, Met her, but the last time I met her, I was with my wife at uh, the arena. She was super sweet, was a complete yeah. sweetheart. So maybe she was just having a bad day. Yep. What was really funny was, do you remember when we had the All Star Game in Pittsburgh? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was uh, 2006, something. Like so Carrie, Un- so we had a plan at this at the station. Carrie Underwood's coming in at this time. We have to get her out before Big and Rich. Got it. Got this. So we're getting her out the front door. She's walking down. Jesus, take the wheel. I'm too drunk to drive. Big and Rich and Carrie Underwood collide right at the front door. And uh, Big Kenny, he was already loaded. Like, <laughs> he was loaded, man. And uh, so we got a, I have a picture of everyone in the lobby. You know, it was like. I think I remember that. She was, I believe she was singing the national anthem. I think I remember that. And yeah. they were performing at the Chevy Amphitheater yep. over in Station Square. Yep. And so yep. I went down to that party, and it was strictly for Chevy employees, all their top salesmen, everything else. Got it. And they had um, these guys up on these uh, statues. It was like, and they would pose. And then when if you were like taking pictures, they'd get behind you and like photobomb you. So like that yeah, cool stuff. Like and then Big and Rich was playing, and so I was with their manager, and he um, after they were done, I had to get him over to PNC Park. Got it. Because they were getting drove driven over, and they were all in a box. He's like, here, call me when the game's over. We'll probably come back over Station Square and hang out. So, game's over. I go over to Station Square. I call him and say, oh, yeah, man, we're at Bar Louie. Come on, come on down. Next thing you know, I'm sitting, John and John Rich and Kenny are sitting there, and there's a small group of people around, you know. Next thing you know, I sit down next to Big Kenny. Me and him buried a bottle of Patron. <laughs> this dude just kept pouring these shots of Patron. And, like, at one point, like, it was, it was the flip phone. Like, I had a flip phone, mm-hmm. and I was just checking it. And he, he got, hey, man, you taking pictures of me? All right. Like, he got all paranoid. I'm like, no, man. I'm like, well, no, I'm not taking any pictures of you, will you? He's like, I just don't want that getting all out there or something like that. You know this? I'm like, no, not at all. He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> Poison them. And uh, that their, their manager. Half a megapixel camera. Right? Their, their, <laughs> their manager uh, sent my, uh, sent Frank, um, the vice president of our company, goes, man, I don't know where you got that promo guy, man, but he's a soldier. I've never seen anyone sit there with Big Kenny that long. He goes, normally they fall off the bar stool. I was like, I was just sitting there holding my head in my office, and I said, I'm like, cool. Good to hear, Frank. You took one for the team. Oh, my God, man. It was just, I was banged up. Oh, well, so the, I remember that All-Star game, and I remember Carrie Underwood being there because I, I don't even know if you know this, but. There used to be a gentleman on CNN Headline News, Ray D'Alessio. He did his sports on CNN Headline News okay. out of Atlanta. And they sent Ray up here to, you know, because national CNN sure. Headline is a national thing. Yeah. And I sold Ray a guitar. He happens to go to the All-Star Game, seeks me out. Apparently, around the same time, you had Carrie Underwood. And he goes, hey, you know, that radio station, I just ran to Carrie Underwood. And I'm like, no, you didn't. He goes, Oh, yes, I did. He sure did. Yeah, yes, I did. And it was and Ray D'Alessio from CNN Headline News was in my office literally probably the same time Underwood was down there. It's, it's a small freaking yeah. world. Well, well another, another time, um, Tim McGraw was doing a charity concert out at uh, Pepsi Cola Roadhouse. I'm staying outside. You know, everyone's inside, like, getting ready for the concert and everything else. All of a sudden, this car pulls up. Robin Roberts gets out. No shit. She's there for this charity concert, whatever, whatever's going on. She's out there, you know, it's like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? You never knew what was going to happen. You know what I mean? But, like, but after sure. a while, like, you just got used to it. Yeah. And, I mean, and it went from, you know, not being able to be on property at shows to being on property at shows 
to creating promotions that dominated my competition. And, you know, we really it's the name of the game, was right? proud of what, what we built. Um, and I was there for 18 years. Damn. 18 years until the pandemic hit. And obviously there was no concerts, no events. No. I was gone like that. But I still um, came back and I consult with them. And yep. I still do their concerts. I don't do as much as I used to do. Um, CMA Awards are on tonight. I broadcast from there. I did broadcast those CMA Awards. Oh, I know you did. And, I mean, basically that's like speed dating with country <laughs> artists for two days. So, yeah, so, how, so talk about that. How does that work? Because I never really I never okay. vetted that out with danger. The, the way it works is um, – you have to be invited to go. Um, what we did was we went under Forever Media. So we put all of our stations and we're going to broadcast. So there's only probably about 25 groups. And that's including um, Bobby Bones' show. Um, yeah. Uh, you know. You're saying um, it's everybody within their, it's the Yeah, top? it's TV. It's everybody. So there's only 25, uh, may, maybe 25 total okay. stations and TV stations. Okay. That can actually broadcast. Period. That's it. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So um, basically you're in a booth. Um, you're not allowed to do any sponsorships, anything like that. Like you have the CMA drop backdrop and you you sit in a 15 by 15. I, uh, I used to have uh, – I had two interns that went to Belmont University in Nashville. So I had them come work for me. Right. Had a videographer. Had a sound guy. Had danger, and then I just kind of made sure everything was flowing. Okay. We would get a list of our artists that were coming. Um, you, you have a stack of bios, so the one intern would have a stack of bios. We'd talk about who's coming ahead of time, and you just went nonstop. They hold up. Um, you're in a booth. It's literally like speed dating. five minutes speed dating with an artist. And then like they tell you, and like they have a person with the stopwatch, like, Wrap it up, wrap it up. Really? Oh, yeah, because they have to get to every booth, and a lot of them have to go to rehearsal because like, they're performing at the got show. It, got it, got um, it. They have other things. So everything's time. Yeah, there's another broadcast with- uh, Everything's time. Yes. So, but I um, mean, Danger would play good guy, bad guy, but he would always go over, you know, if he wasn't. Like some, every now and then he wouldn't. But if you get a good artist, I mean, you had, you had like maybe five, six huge names- you only got one chance to talk to Garth Brooks. You're going to take it all the time you could take. Absolutely. So um, he'd be like, I'd be like, okay, you know, I was, uh, I made friends with the escorts who were doing the timing, and I would go over and I'd start bullshitting with him and be like, oh, what's going on? You know, and I would try and delay time so he could get more time. Oh, uh, right on. And then, um, you know, they'd be like, oh, wrap it up. And, you know, he's going, he's going. I'm like, oh, I'll get him. To Wrap it up with danger. Good luck. <laughs> right. So so next thing you know, man, he's coming there, sitting there looking at me. I'm like, <laughs> and I act like I'm getting mad, but I didn't give a shit. I'm like, we're getting content for our station. We're, we're going to blow these awards up. You absolutely, know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah. that's that's the way me and him worked. And, um, you know, and uh, we'd have the videos. And, yep, I remember. And um, the one year, uh, it was the 50th anniversary of the TMA Awards. I flew my wife in the day of the show, and uh, I got us tickets to the show. Okay. They were just nosebleed seats, just a, something to do. They were like eighty bucks a piece, so we go in to the show. I uh, I take a video, and obviously I'm an admin for the Froggy page for right. Facebook. Right. I put this video up of uh, the CM, the beginning of the CMA awards. I mean, it was like that one pixel uh, camera, <laughs> like I'm, I'm miles away. The video got one point five million views. What does that tell you? It was insane. I I don't know why. Like. All I know is it got shared and liked and everything else. And the best part is the after parties. That's what I hear. Yeah. So, like, all the record labels, they have after parties. You know, they go celebrate their successes. So um, I took my wife to the uh, Universal Group, music group uh, party. All of a sudden, we're standing there. We met Alan Jackson there. I met Damn. Jim Fjork was there. Yeah. Everyone's dressed up. It's just after the awards show. So um, all of a sudden... My wife's standing right here looking at me, and I just see her eyes go. <laughs> I was like, it was Taylor Swift. Of course. She comes walking in, um, and uh, she's with her publicist. I know who her publicist is, and um, she was with Kelsey Ballerini. So I was like, wow, like this is amazing. So I go up to her publicist. I'm like, hey, my name's Donnie. Um, 
I know Frank, and I worked at Frog Youth with him in Pittsburgh. And I was like, would you mind if my, I asked Taylor if she'd say hi to my wife. So, as you know, she pulls her over, and we're talking to Taylor Swift for, for a couple minutes. Um, the one year I went, I was pretty loaded up by the time I got to the Universal Party. I'm walk, I'm getting out of an Uber. All of a sudden, uh, Luke Bryan's out there. He just won Entertainer of the Year. He was leaving the party smoking a cigar. Hey, man, what's up? You know, it's like, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, what is going on? Uh-huh. And, it's I mean, a beautiful thing. It, it's wild. It's uh-huh. wild. Um, uh-huh. It just was a fun ride. It was just a fun no ride. No doubt. You know, people are like, you have the best job in the world, man. Oh, you know, I was like, it is pretty cool. Yeah, it, it, and I think I think you were always able to, as far as I could tell, enjoy the moment. You know, and I could have learned some lessons from you in that regard too, because I remember knowing that I was doing some special things in the guitar world, sure. and being surrounded by cool people. But at times, it was just I couldn't break away from that business mentality. It was, I was always working. Well, I, where mean, I could have laid back and said, "Yeah, you know, that's kind of that's kind of cool." But, but the thing was, you you work hard. No matter what you do, you work hard. Generally, yeah. I try. And, and, yeah. No, no. And I maybe, mean, maybe it, too hard for that matter. Yeah, no. And I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I know you reinvented yourself mm-hmm. into uh, had to a realtor. Um, you know, and people like you and me. I mean, we find ways. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it. I think it goes back to mindset. You know, if you so would you not agree too that being in entertainment and being in that business, you know, in different in any capacity, if you're gonna make it, you gotta freaking hustle. And I think that was a good sure. lesson for me because sure. the demands were high. Yeah, dealing with those folks. And I mean, I you just, know what I mean. That's I, how I felt. I used to see the inventory that you had in there, <laughs> and is uh. a. What was I thinking? One to three what was man, I thinking? <laughs> one to three man operation. I mean, yeah, Fred used to look at me like, was, you got to be I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just, there was, there was a lot going on yeah. in there, you know? So, I mean, yeah, you, you had to focus on it. I mean, my job, it was, I never knew what was coming next. Yeah. No you doubt. know, and no doubt. I remember in 2002, 2003, Dirk Bentley coming in. Yeah, on, he, dude, he, I used to love that guy. He was on radio He tour, loved so Pittsburgh. He, he, he loved you guys. Yes, he just got signed. So what they do is whenever an artist gets signed, they go on what's called radio tour. Basically, they hop a bus, they travel the country, they go to radio stations, Give an interview. introduce themselves, say hello. That's when you get your liners. Hey, this is Dirk Spenley. I'm feeling froggy. So if you, if you hear that <laughs> tomorrow on the radio, that was recorded back in 2002. We might have got some new ones since then. But, uh, it just, it was, for as big as the market country music is, the nucleus of it is very small. Got it. Everyone knows each other. Like oh, yeah. Down in Nashville. No doubt. There's times no like, if, if someone if someone was saying something. It's a community. There was, there was one person that would say things all the time, and I'd be like, that's bullshit. That's not true. I know, I know for a fact that that's not true. Um, name dropping and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you can get called out. You'll get called out real quick because it's like I said, it's worldwide. But yep, but really, it's a tight community. Yeah, and I mean the record reps, they all get along. The artists all root for each other. Yeah, there's none of this fighting back and forth. I mean, right now, uh, Marin Morris and Jason Aldean are having it out. You know, because of what Jason's wife said. Yeah, you know, so it is what it is. Like I mean. People just have opinions. You just got to let people have their opinions. That's what me and you were talking about earlier. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, everyone has to jump into this and jump into that. And you don't have to be in the fight. Like, I mean, you could have your opinions. Like, I 100%. voted yesterday. I saw your post today. Yeah. I'm not telling you who I voted for well, yeah, because you don't because you don't give a shit. It doesn't matter to me. You know? 100%. And oh. that, yeah, let, let's, let's, let's just talk about that for a second. So, th- very much true about how entertainers get along. I've always thought the following, too. Like, an entertainer takes a very um, tough risk when they throw their personal political beliefs out there. They that's, certainly, Nat- that's Natalie Maines they ha- from yeah. the Dixie Chicks. You think? They have the right to do it. So, when I say that, yep. it isn't that I don't believe they shouldn't. I'm just saying. I'm asking the question. As a business standpoint, you're an idiot. Is it a wise decision? Absolutely not. When it when it's not required right. for civility, it, it, it can cost you millions upon millions of dollars. And I mean, the thing is, it's your choice. 
This yeah, is, you have the right. This is America, Jack. No one is the, no one's saying I, I'm the right. not. Yeah, no, I'm. You have the right to be stupid if you yeah, want to. That's right. Right. And plenty of people take that right. <laughs> All I mean, the time. It, it is what it is. You know what I mean? And I try and, you know, I hope for the best, you know. I don't care whose candidate won, whose candidate lost. You know, I voted. It is what it is. The, the funny part about to this is, is like, this is the one thing that astounds me. When entertainers get so political, and you see a lot of it in rock. I don't think you see it as much in country, but in in terms of classic rock, like coming up, Ted bands, Nugent. yeah, but, but bands that came out of the '60s sure. and '70s, there was a volatile nature of of belief there, and I just think that you know you can you can assume they have the attitude, hey, I've made enough money, I really don't care what anybody thinks of me. Okay, that's all right too, yeah. but I also think that entertainment is supposed to be. I think a, a beautiful part of life where you can take, um, I don't know, refuge from the get stresses away from it. of and get life. away from it. Yeah. Yes. So football when, players, when baseball you, players, yes. hockey, like I don't want to hear, get, mu- especially music because music's like sure, a, a, exactly, like a, like a visceral thing. Right? Yes. I mean, the music that you choose to listen to, there's a reason you listen to it. It soothes you. It makes you happy. Feel a certain smart. way. Yes. So, um, like you said, you want people want to get away from. I don't want to hear your politics. You know, um, yep. f- football, I, 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 I'm not as a huge football fan as I used to be. But when I was in my 20s, yeah, every, I every morning, man. I got a picture of you holding up Super Bowl tickets sitting in my office. Yeah. I got to find that picture and get it to you. It's uh-huh. the, you got the two the Detroit, the 2006. Yes, I went to that. January uh, Bettis's yep. last game. Of course, I go to the Super Bowl where it snows two goddamn feet. Every every other Super Bowl is in the tropics. I have this photo of Donnie that yeah. of him sitting in my office holding up these two Super yeah. Bowls. I had never seen a Super Bowl ticket in my life. I was like, whoa! It was amazing. That was that was amazing. Yeah. And I mean, every Sunday morning, you know, I'd be up at <laughs> ten o'clock. Time for prime time. Time for uh, game yeah, you, day. We were addicted to football, and I would. Yeah, you know, I remember. And, and the thing is, like, what it goes back to, it's like I was there to watch football. Yeah, I don't want to hear the politics. I don't want to hear yeah. anything. Get in your fishbowl and swim, you know? Like, I, this is what I'm paying money for. Yeah. This is why you make millions of dollars. It's entertainment. That's exactly. Entertain me. I don't I don't need help with my well, beliefs. Here, and here's what's crazy about it. It's like, I don't know why entertainers. Now, maybe it's because of there's so much money in it now that once they make a great amount of money, they really don't care. But as a business, the last thing you want to do is potentially alienate 40 to 45 percent of your potential audience sure. of anything that you do right i mean it like, doesn't make any sense and you can <clears throat> do that with one opinion i mean so yeah so bruce springsteen is very opinionated but i wonder and i do wonder this i've always wondered this you know the rolling stones don't talk about politics they did and they are the biggest you know but grossing they played the world. Half, they played at halftime at that super bowl <laughs> I was in they the. Did. I was in the bathroom making deals with the devil so the Steelers <laughs> would win the Super Bowl while they were playing. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> but God. I, but I'm just saying that, you know, had Bruce never gone the political route, maybe he'd be the biggest artist in the world. Because I'm saying that he, it, there is a cost yeah. associated in the end. Absolutely. With taking a side. I mean, if you don't care, then that's fine. You know what I mean? I just. I mean, if I'm your manager and or. You know, I'm paying you money. I'd not like it. I wouldn't like it if you're doing that. You know, it's like uh, you have a very dream job. You've been gifted with something. It's like, so, I mean, like I said, but it's not my choice to tell them to do that. You know no. what I mean? So, but I mean. But do you ever sit and ponder, like, the world that we're living in? Just the past eight or nine years, like, just seeing how so – how today, Donnie, everybody is so into identifying and, and labeling yeah, themselves. A, and like identity, right. identity. They call it identity politics, but identity anything. But things I don't care. I don't care. You don't have to push it on me. It's I quote Eminem on this. He's like, if you're nice to me, I'm going to be nice to you. Yep. You know what I mean? It's that simple. I don't care it's that simple. if you're white, black, green, yellow, gay, lesbian, whatever. I, I, and I you, is a person that doesn't mind anybody it gets tiring hearing it all the time you know Mm -hmm. like everyone's trying to drive this agendas down my throat and everything else and i just think uh with social media and technology the world moves too fast 
and that's why I think people were losing their minds. I like minds. theory. I think we talked a little bit off air. Like, I love yeah. this theory about, about the computer versus the human mind. Right, man. I mean, like, why didn't you answer my text? I texted you three times. Hey, did you get this email? Did this? Did, like, everyone wants this, this, this so quick. And it puts so much pressure in, like, it's like, slow down. Yeah. The thing is, with the internet and um, everything else, you don't have to drive to those appointments. You can do a Zoom call. You could just so there's plenty of time in the day to accomplish everything. Things that were accomplished back in the day, 10, 20 years ago, it was over a course of a day that you had to drive there. You had to go do this. You had to file your report or there type was a up. process, right? So, and it was manageable, right? And now, like you want to do, put eight days into one. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, hey, you got this meeting, then this meeting, then this meeting, then this meeting. Then, and it's like. Whew. Well, the demands on the human mind are being constantly taxed. Sure. Because I, it, it, so what I've noticed the last couple of years is that my brain reaches max capacity now. Whereas if I try to go beyond that, I start to f- suffer physically. Besides your, mentally. I start your to brain, physically. People, a lot of people don't know this. Um your brain can become full just like your stomach in a day. It can only take in so much. I, oh. So many inputs, you mean? Yes. It, there's a word for it. I can't think of it. I used to. I call it max capacity. Yeah. I mean, but there is a word for it, but your brain gets full just like your stomach does. It can only take in so much before it's it's tired and it needs rest and it needs to unwind. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, man. I can't believe I can't think of the word of it right now. I used to. That's all right. I can't think of a singer either. Yeah, it's on my right. mind. <laughs> yeah. We're getting older. If we only forget one one thing a piece, we're doing good. <laughs> Come that's, on, man. That's, that's not too bad. So. Uh, it, but uh, so now you're working in restoration, right? Fire restoration. Is that right? Yeah. Um, my brother in law's brother in law, he put up for this job uh, for fire restoration sales, which. Knew nothing about. Right. Never worked it's in anything. Beautiful though. I love but, it. Um, stories like that. What I, what I do is whenever uh, someone has a fire at their house, I go walk them through it, get them fixed up, and get them cleaned up. Which, um, yeah, like we work with their insurance and everything else to fix their house, get them living. Like um, I learned a lot about the insurance business. I bet. Um, Adjusters. Yeah. Well, the thing is. <laughs> What I tell everybody, and what's very would be very helpful in your realtor, mm-hmm. whenever people get their insurance for their house, make sure their house is covered for twenty five percent over what they would want to sell it for when they get their insurance. Interesting. Yeah, because um, you have a dwelling part of your um, so that's your walls, your ceilings, floors, right. anything in your structure. Hypothetically, turn your house upside down. Anything that falls out, those are your possessions. Right. As you get older. You possess more, mm-hmm. so you sadly, go, yeah. So, but, but the thing is, so you got to make sure that stuff's covered. So, uh, literally, you want to have a minimum of one hundred fifty thousand dollars, yeah, because personal th- possession, because that means it has that's the price to get them cleaned, stuff cleaned, mm-hmm. smells out of them, and replaced. Stuff adds up quick. And then yeah, the, I never thought about that. And then the third part is um, uh, the loss of use. That's the amount of money the insurance will pay for you to live outside of your house while your house is being rebuilt. So basically what I do is I walk, I make people, I deal with this three, four times a week where I'm with someone that just had a fire at their house and I basically explain to them, like I educate them and let them know what their options are. The dues. And oftentimes the, they're underinsured? Uh, it, it depends. I, I've seen a lot where people are definitely – underinsured okay and it's sad like um for people that rent um get renter's insurance yeah oh, for sure it's literally like a hundred bucks a it's year for yeah. like fifty thousand dollars in coverage yep i've seen houses that are rentals and i talk to the family and like do you have renter's insurance it's like basically starting all over mm. so mm. i tell people don't mess with credit and don't mess with insurance yeah yeah, those are, those, good, those, are, those, are, those are two things that can eat you real quick. You need them both. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I mean, people don't have fires. If you meet me twice, you're cursed. 
That's what I. Th- that's that's what <laughs> I tell would, you. Would hope. Holy <clears throat> shit! Yeah, that's what I. There tell is going to be someone out there that's going to meet you twice. <laughs> we have a lady that three times. Oh, uh, that's a little suspicious. <laughs> the thing is, I, I, I see the fire marshals. I, I know all the fire marshals of Allegheny County. I see them there. I know the rules of a fire. Um, Don't drive over any lines. Stay out of the way. Yeah. And wait till that fire marshal clears that clears that house before you even think of putting one foot in it. But no, I had, and uh, thing is, I educate people and help them. And mentally, it's very draining on these folks. Like they're it's in probably draining on you too, man. It's got to be. There's, there's an emotional component yeah, to your job. For, it for has sure. to be. But I mean, the thing is, I I know that I'm I can help them, and I know what it takes to get them back on their feet. I explained to them. I was like, listen, this is gonna be a long drug out process because it's not like if their kitchen's burned up. It's not like you just call the kitchen guy and they've got to go do. I could do 3D imaging of their entire house. Yeah. Um, we have uh, estimators. Insurance has estimators, stuff like that. What's your smoke smell? Has to be gone the smoke there? smoke does 90% of the damage. Like you can, Really? Yeah, because you can't get it out. Anytime you have a fire, if um, smoke goes through your entire house, immediately we're throwing your couches out, throwing your mattresses out. Cause Damn. Because you, you can't get the smell out. So like that's why I say back to the possessions, it's a lot. Like, I mean, it adds up quick. It adds up real quick. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It's a lot different than what I, than radio. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I look back at my radio. It's like a whole nother life. <laughs> Cause I was just, it was so different. You know what I mean? And, Dude, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I look back at, at, uh, at Boogie street in those years that we yeah. knew you and then to see, you know, what then cha- making a change to realty. It was kind of like really refreshing in the beginning. Sure. It was like wow, a little overwhelming too. But it was yeah. like wow. But you were always like, working. You're create. You're creative, and you always. I mean, mm-hmm. this project, and then doing yeah. doing your show on the radio and everything else. I mean, you think outside the box, and I think that's why you have your success. I th- and, oh, thank you. And I think um, you enjoy doing it. Um, a lot of people work in life and hate what they do, and. They do it just to make the ends meet, whatever. I feel like in general, you do things your way and uh, you well, enjoy Well, not it. always my way, but right. I try. <laughs> right. No, no one does it always. You yeah. Know, I, I I don't know, man. The, the, lessons, the lessons have been uh, deep and sometimes difficult. But in the end, it really uh, – nothing ever happened for me unless I got the ball rolling. Sure. I had a lot of help. But sure. nothing. But the idea has to start somewhere, yeah. and I just I have that gene where I'm in. I I just don't have the risk of gene, yeah. for better or worse. I, I will, I'm willing to take the chance. I think right. that that's where where the good stuff lies. Yeah, and if the, you can get there. Well, the thing was too. I mean, you had your dad helping you for um, sure, and he was always a good man. I for mean, sure. remember right, him thank coming you. in, and um, he was funny. Your, as shit. your children, your children in the office, they were young. Dude, it's a charm <clears throat> period of my life. I think I look at you and Danger and the whole fran- the Froggy family, that whole era. I didn't enjoy it enough. I look at no, I probably didn't take enough time to. There was a lot. There was a lot going on. You couldn't enjoy yeah. it all. But as a as a whole, I think it was fun. I think it, it was, was successful. And I mean, honestly, it fun. But I mean, my office was right down. Dude, it was by, something new every day. So your your, your kids would be up there. They'd be at the vending machine. Uh, I'd, I'd be throwing dollars in there for him. Like, yes. hey, get, get something else, man. Get something else. You were the toy man because there was always some kind of froggy toy of something. I mean, I think, I think Austin pretty much cleaned out one of everything in the in the froggy promotional closet. Oh, yeah. no, Because, I, I, I mean, they, they, were, they were little. Uh-huh. So, um, I don't everybody give there. Them, give them some great. crayons and an activity, froggy activity. And it helped me. <laughs> no, that, that's what I'm saying. And, you, 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 and uh, like, I mean, I knew you were working, so I knew you, it was hard to entertain them at some time. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was, uh, but like I said, that whole, I, I, I will tell you that like when things are really good in your life, you really need to recognize that and take some time to look around and be grateful. I was grateful. Is it my nature? Yeah. But had I realized how great of an era that was, even with the stuff with, with Kiss and all that, I was doing it all, and I was saying, wow, this is awesome, but I really wasn't. Right. Do you know? Like, we right. don't take enough time to enjoy sure. life but, but the thing is, as we go. The things you did with Kiss, come on, man. Taking a I look got back. lucky. I know. It, it, I got lucky, it, it, It's not luck. I mean, Somewhat. the thing is, you worked hard whenever you were doing it, so you got rewarded. 
And, yes, there was some I, of that. And I mean, you got to go in the pit. And I mean, I know yeah. you loved photography. Yeah, because all kind of worked out. You had you had them nice cameras all the time. <laughs> I had you come out and shoot our concerts for me. You did, I did. You, I you did a Kenny that. Chesney concert. You were him. in the pit at uh, Heinz Field. I did him and Jason Aldean. Yeah. I did, I did a couple other shows with you. Yeah, the photography thing was great. Uh, I did. I was just doing it. I, I love sing, I was a single dad. Yeah. And that I, was my way of just always taking pictures I loved pictures photography. Um, I took courses in high school and um, college. I actually... Um, I'm good at composing photographs, right and I'm good at taking. Well, you ran the whole web when the web was young. Yes, all the froggy web stuff was Dallas, used. Yep, when you'd hit enter <clears throat> and you'd wait. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would. I would have to load. The rule was I had to load at least ten photos from each event, and that was an undertaking. <laughs> Dude, we used to have. You've got mail. Tubes on our. We used to have like. TV <coughs> tube monitors sitting on our desks. It was wild. There was no flat screen. No. These were like tubes. We're, that's when the Sony Vega flat screens came out. Finally, yeah. Like three of us <laughs> were trying to pick one up. Like oh. Gerald, Gerald, the president of Froggy at the time, he had this Sony TV that he was getting a new TV, and he, he wanted us to come to his house. And he would always throw us like 20 bucks or whatever. You know, <laughs> if we come do something in his house or do something for his wife, whatever. So he... Tim Tim Miller wants this TV for uh, his uh, apartment down in Bridgeville. So it was like in a wooden case. Like, I worked for a moving company. A wooden case? Yeah, it was like, you know. Like, it was substantial. It was, it was like a stand, you know, and the TV oh, okay. was built into it. Okay. I worked for a moving company before I, when I was in college. All right. So, and I'd pick up anything. This was the heaviest goddamn thing I've ever picked up in my entire life. And we're trying to take it upstairs. And he has a turn up at the steps. I'm like, it's never going to fit. It's never going to fit. Like, we almost died lifting this TV up, man. Like, <laughs> nowadays, man, you can pick up an 80-inch TV yourself, walk down the street like, yeah, look at this. I just saw a 75-inch TV at Costco for, I think, like 500 bucks. Yeah, I wouldn't surprise me at all. Think about that. 75-inch TV, man, this thing just... That's it. I have seventy-five inch TV in the house. I got one in my bedroom. I got one downstairs. I'm not surprised. But, but, I, but I got it for I got it for like eight hundred bucks last year. Yeah, technology is just insane, man. I mean, when you, when you sit and think about how archaic our web presence was back then. I was writing code. I know. I was like, writing code. I was like, "What is this?" Because we all hung out. Facebook was not a thing. MySpace, MySpace, was kind of a thing. What was your song? Remember, everyone had a song. <laughs> And they, and they let you customize the background mm -hmm. so people would just cool. like destroy oh destroy the background like repetitive yeah. stuff it was just it was it was cool it was a cool idea I mean I don't think it was managed well but I well mean, I mean in the end yeah is it still around it, I, you go to myspace.com is it still like yeah, out there I doubt it just disappeared because I think Justin Timberlake bought it like five or seven years ago right and I, nothing ever happened from I, there I have no idea I'm, I might go on my myspace myspace.com <laughs> Check me out on my because I remember like you were able to put pictures up and stuff like that. It was, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, there was well, we had never seen anything like it before. It was the first quote unquote social media, and I remember being at Washburn Guitars in two thousand five or six, and somebody from their management group said, "Eric, you really need to get into the social media." And I'm like, "What? It's MySpace." I'm like, oh, "Okay." And then Twitter was right after that. Yeah. And I think I think then it was eighty characters in the beginning. It was very short. So, yeah, it, it was. I think I think it was less than that. Well, I went there and all I saw was people like swearing at each other. <laughs> I mean, from the very beginning, that's all I saw was like people like really fighting. Like I didn't from see day I, one. I didn't, I didn't see people fighting at the beginning. Oh, I did. From day and then one. all of a sudden, like you had the you had the agitators, <laughs> the ones who the pot stirs, you know. And, I saw and, them from day one, and, and they led the charge, and then. They were just the fire starters, man. They'd poke, poke, poke. Next thing you know, they were trolls, and they didn't even know they were trolls because trolls wasn't – they didn't call people trolls. Then. I thought things were – I thought it was amazing <clears throat> that the internet was basically free. You know, yeah. I'm thinking, wow, this is – all this is available. And I used to say to myself, I can – whatever in my mind, whatever I fancy at that moment, whatever thought goes through my brain, I can look it up on this Google thing and get all the answers. I don't. I whatever is, whatever is like at my whim. I can investigate. Are you saying that's when the Dewey Decimal System went to hell? <laughs> <laughs>
the Dewey, De- what? the Dewey Decimal. You remember system. going? To, remember going to library classes? Dewey, yeah, <laughs> and the metric system, the Dewey Decimal. What, what, what is? What was that bullshit? I mean, they had they had the library. Is that still a thing? The Dewey Decimal system. I mean, I'm sh- don't like use computer them. wise. I mean, it's like. Is that a system to look yeah, up shit? Dewey Decimal Google. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, I mean, no one. I mean, literally. The Dewey Decimal System. Here, here's the Dewey Decimal System right here. Dude, you have fun? Did you have fun? Yeah. On this show? Absolutely, man. It's great to just sit here, shoot the shit, have a beer, and relax. I think um, I would love to have you back again and also uh, for some more Four Friends series shows. Yeah. I could see you with a crowd. It could get a little dicey. Oh, it'd be fun. Nah. <laughs> I think we should plop danger in you nah. and one more. <laughs> and we, we'll figure we, out who that'll get, be. If we could get Tim Miller out of here. That's the freaking quadfecta right no, there. If it's, or the trifecta with me. Yeah, no, it's... So, Tim Miller, if you're out there, buddy, I know you're I know you're watching this. I know you are. It's out of curiosity. We get you, danger, and, and, and Mr. Fast over here. It would be... That would be a thing. Yeah, no, I mean... Let's see if we can craft that. Because um, we were all there at the beginning. And, I mean, like I said, I've watched your story from 2003 it's, it's to now. It's a weird kind of thing, man. Yeah, and, I mean, like I said, we lost contact for a while. and uh, Life. You know, yeah, that's it. That's what it is, you know. Yeah. Dude, I, this means a lot to me to do this. No, it was fun, honestly. We, we'll do it again. Yeah, absolutely. All right, friends. Donnie Fast. Peace. We're out. <laughs>